everyone, you're actually, I've given this a couple of times, you're particularly bad at this. <laughs> you're, this audience is not very good at this. So, this is uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, and you see the blue eyes and the under eye makeup, and it suggests that it's a woman. How about these? Are these men? Are they women? So these are siblings. What is their sex? One's a man, one's a woman. How about this person? Very good. So I would say if you just saw these eyes, it might be hard to distinguish if this is a man or a woman. But if I show you a little more of the forehead, it's very easy to know that this is a man. It's very, very easy. This may seem like a show and tell, but I'm actually training your eye at a certain thing by showing you these little increased visual cues. So, this is a man, an act, a uh, model. Or, are these two men and women? So one of them is a very famous and iconic woman, and one is a person I found on the internet that looks like her. I don't know where I found this, but. Oh, wow. <laughs> this talk took 45 hours. Uh, so what facial characteristics define gender identity around the eyes? What defines it? What really defines it when we think about that? Is it the forehead? Is it the brow? Is it the eyelids? Is it the globe? Or is it the hair? Well, we style the hair. Is it the globe? Does globe identify a person's gender? Are these the eyes of a man or a woman? It's hard to tell. We're seeing just the eyeballs, just the globe. But when I show you more, it's maybe a little more evident. Maybe a little more evident. These are relatively flat foreheads. They're both men. They're both men. How about the eyelids? The eyelids identify an individual's gender. Because when I do gender reassignment surgery, they all want their eyelids done. What's the sex of these two individuals? <laughs> the top one is an actress, and the bottom is a guy. Scarlett you know, Johansson and a guy. Found on the internet. With similar looking eyes and eyelids. How about the brow and the forehead? This starts to identify what we look like. So are these the eyes of a man or a woman? It, this is very easy. Man, it's very easy. So why, why do you easily get this as being a man? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the corrugator muscle is very thick and the bone is very thick. So the muscle is thicker in men, and the bone is thicker, because the corrugator muscle sits in a notch beneath the prominent area of the forehead. And in women, it's not very prominent. So this is Leonardo DiCaprio. He's got this thick muscle. And this is from work that Sebastian and I did. I sort of pirated them. This is his stuff. And if you look, the area of the, the forehead has a ridge on it, and that ridge is different in men than it is in women. And the way the muscle sits is a little bit different. So this is a, an oculoplastic surgeon that's a good friend of mine from Sydney, Australia. And you can see his very prominent superorbital ridge. And that's unidentifiable. It's unquestionable that it's a, it's a man. And the muscle is thicker. The corrugator muscle, and I've dissected everything else away, is thicker in men and in women. So now, when I come back and ask you, are these the eyes of a man or a woman? It's pretty easy. It's a woman. It's a flat forehead without much muscle, without any bony rim. And this is pretty easy. Even though the eyebrows were thick, it's pretty simple that this is a woman. So, when I try to change the visual sexuality of somebody from a man to a woman, I do either drilling down the forehead or taking the frontal bone off 
and contouring it and putting it back. I may do it like this, or in more cases, when the ridge is more prominent, I have to take the bone off and I have to recontour it and make it thinner. I have to do that. So now it gets more difficult. I put the easy ones in the beginning and the harder ones at the end. Are these the eyes of a man or a woman? It's interesting. People said it's a woman. So the answer is both. Uh, so as you look carefully, it's hard to distinguish this. This is Andresia Pejek, who's one of the world's famous transgender models. And the interesting thing is, even though many of the things, the way she styled her eyebrow, the way she styled a number of things, are feminine, she hasn't had any brow contouring. So she's got the brow structure of a, of a man still. How about these? Are these the eyes of a man or a woman? Man, that's good. Because this is Harry Neff, who's also a transgender model, runaway model, who also has not had any brow-changing surgery. She hasn't had any brow or forehead reshaping. And this is what she looks like in her modeling pictures. It's pretty simple. Or, or, or. So what facial characteristics def define gender identity? In the, in the, I think it's the brow and the forehead. I think that's what identifies what makes our eyes see. It starts with the bone as I think all facial beauty does start with bone. So, when a person like this comes to me and wants to look like a woman, and this is a emer brilliant emergency room physician that wanted to be a woman and has a reasonably effeminate looking face, I do a number of things. Shorten up the forehead, bring down the hairline, change the forehead, change the bony structure, of, and make that person look like this, okay? In facially, changing the nose, changing the jawbone, changing a number of things. It's a long surgery, but it's doable. Or in a situation like this, where the person wants to look different, we do a number of things to change the gender. Obviously, a ridge like this is male only, and it's, it's unquestionable to you that this is a male. So when I take a person like this, what I do is I bring forward their hairline, I lift their brow. In some ways, this is a little bit of an aging procedure, but this heavy brow is a little, so I've taken down the, the brow bone all the way across. I took the brow bone off and contoured it, shortened up the forehead, shortened the lip, because our eye sees these proportions. A long forehead, we think man. A longer lip, we think a little bit mad. Not exactly, so I've shortened the lip as well when I've done this. So, you know, changing the male characteristics to female characteristics, some of this is blonding the hair and eye makeup. That's clear. But we want to try to change the structures. In this, it's relatively identifiable. You can imagine that if I took the eye makeup off of this, this person would look much more feminine with the lip averted, with the forehead shortened, the hairline moved forward, and the brow bone changed. This is what we do for these things. I, th these are sometimes complex and difficult surgeries to do. But, but you can see this prominent ridge in the forehead, even though the lighting of these pictures is different, I apologize for that, makes this look more feminine. The eyebrow is higher, and we identify, our eye identifies it. So in summary, I realize this is not as wise a talk as Sebastian's, who I looked up, up to a lot. The sexual dimorphism of the periorbital region is mostly related to the bone, then the muscle, then hair, which is a style thing, then the fat, and then the skin. Lastly, the skin. Thank you very much.